Hey guys, I'm Evan and welcome to Country View Acres. So today is the day that our meat chickens go to freezer camp. So not going to show the butchering process, but probably going to show more of a before and an after. So right now we're just trying to get everything set up. Well, I think we've got everything set up now to butcher the chickens. We're going to do it up here at our new pole barn this year. It's going to be a little different. We're setting up mostly under the porch so that we can stay out of the rain. It did end up raining while we were trying to get everything ready. But let's, let me just show you what we got set up and how we're going to do it. So we're going to transport the chickens just using a dog crate. I think we'll be able to fit about nine in there. And then we're going to bring them up here and this is where we got our killing cones set up here in the grass. Um, that's where we'll dispatch the chickens. So the next thing we're going to do is we'll scald the chickens. That's going to make them easier to pluck. So we just got an old turkey fryer and we're going to get this up to 150 degrees. And then we've got, they're kind of like a high temperature rubber glove so that we can handle them and not get burnt by the water. After that, we're going to pluck the chicken. And this is what you call a whiz bang chicken plucker. This is like a homemade do it yourself chicken plucker. I bought this off of Facebook Marketplace, some guy was selling it. So this is gonna spin the chicken around. These rubber fingers will pull off the feathers and we'll spray them down with a hose to wash the feathers and the feathers are all come out the bottom. And we're hoping that we'll be able to just scoop up all the feathers with the tractor bucket. So after we pluck the chickens, we're gonna toss them in this cooler full of water. That's gonna help them to start to cool down. And then over here, this is where we're going to actually do the butchering of the chickens is, is just on a regular old table, uh, folding table. And they're not tall enough, so we ended up, we add some blocks of wood to that to get this to a good working height. So all the parts that we won't keep are going to go into this tote. And then all the parts we will keep, like the gizzards, like the chicken feet, the livers, the hearts, all that stuff we're going to put in these totes over here. And then... The chickens, once they're processed, we're gonna put them in this cooler full of ice and they'll start cooling down. So the chickens we're processing today, they're Cornish cross chickens. We've been raising them. They've been, they're just under eight weeks old and they're huge. They're ready to go to freezer camp. And this is kind of the whole, what you work up to is today where you can finally get all that meat and put it in the freezer. But today is not the most pleasant day in the world. It is a lot of work. And I'm going to guess that we got 27 meat birds to do. It's probably going to take us at least three hours to get that all done today. So we're going to go ahead and get started. And we'll come back once we've got everything processed. So it ended up taking us five and a half hours to butcher the 27 chickens. And it rained about half the time we were out here. So it was nice being under the porch to be able to do the, most of the work. And we've already got everything cleaned up. We've got a few things left to put away. But let me show you everything we kept from the chickens and how we're going to use it. So this here is the chicken feet. Some people will make broth out of these, but what we're going to do, we're going to cut the fingernails off of them. We'll dehydrate these. They make great dog treats. And then we're going to take the gizzards and we'll dehydrate these as well. And that will be a dog treat. We've got the hearts and we'll dehydrate those as dog treats. So all this right here will be dog treats. We have the necks, we'll turn that into chicken broth. And then from like here over, that's all the chicken livers. And we'll freeze those for later. But the big thing that we got was 27 chickens. They barely fit inside of this cooler. And some of them are just huge. So uh, we're gonna end up getting them out of this cooler. We're gonna try to get them in a fridge. So in the pole barn here, I've got a freezer or a fridge, it's a convertible. You can switch it back and forth. So I've got it switched over to be a refrigerator. We're gonna take all this chicken, put it in the refrigerator, we're gonna let it sit a day, and then we'll get it out and we'll continue to process it. We'll put, some of it will freeze whole, other ones we'll, we'll cut up into pieces, but at least that breaks it up into two days and we're not trying to do everything in one day. So we're gonna go ahead and start moving these in the fridge. We're gonna go ahead and get the dehydrator started first, I guess. So if you don't know what this is, this is a gizzard, and it's basically the first organ that digests the chicken's food. Sometimes it has little rocks and stuff in it. That's where your grit goes to help grind up the food before it goes to the stomach. Very tough muscle. This is all the little chicken hearts here. Make another good treat, and then we'll just start dehydrating these. Chicken feet. Rebecca said she'll cut the nails off after they're dry. 
So my other dehydrator went bad. I've been, this is my new one. LEM seems to be working out all right. I've had it for what, about a year now. Let's turn this up all the way. Can't remember, there's a maximum on here. We'll do 14 hours, see how that does. So we went ahead and we put them in their shrink bags and we'll just put them in here until tomorrow when we'll close them up. Hopefully 27 chickens will fit in here. Well, these six chickens are ones we're gonna cut up into pieces. And that pretty much fills up the whole fridge, almost. So now that we got the chickens in the fridge, that's pretty much all we're gonna do today. Um, Rebecca's getting ready to bleach the coolers and get them all cleaned up. I moved the dehydrator, I moved that inside so no animals could get to it tonight. So if any of you guys out there think this is something that you're gonna wanna do in the future, um, I got a few pieces of advice. Uh, one is the first piece of equipment you should buy is going to be a plucker. If you've ever plucked a chicken by hand, um, you'll hate it. It takes forever. The chicken plucker, I didn't show it in the video, but you put a chicken in there and in 10 seconds, and I'm not kidding, 10 seconds, all the feathers are off. There's just a few little ones you might have to pick off there, but the, the chicken is pretty much, it almost like scrubs the chicken clean too. So it, these little fingers that are inside of here, it all spins and it'll pull all the feathers out and it pretty much kind of scrubs all the, any dirt and stuff off of the chicken and it's pretty well clean and ready to process. So the first thing, if you ever do this, I mean, if you're doing one or two, that's one thing, but if you're wanting to do several, uh, chicken pluckers should be your first purchase. So like I said, it's a long day out here and just every little process takes a long time. So even gathering the chickens up and dispatching them takes a long time. And the thing that speeds that up is gonna be having multiple killing cones. We've got four, that works out well for us. And you can make those, you can make them, you don't have to go buy one, you can actually try to make one yourself. But I do suggest um, having more than one. So the first time we processed chickens was in 2016, shortly after we bought this property. Um, and we didn't have a, a plucker. I tried to make a plucker on a drill that was spun on a drill and that didn't work out too good. Tried hand plucking them. And then after hand plucking several, we ended up skinning the chickens because it was just way too much work to try to pluck them uh, by hand. So. Um, and we hand plucked, we actually probably hand plucked a couple years, that year and the next year. And uh, then we probably finally got the, the, the actual chicken plucker after that. And that was the biggest improvement for sure. And uh, we've been doing it for several years now. So everything's kind of second nature to us. It's, it's um, a little bit more normalized. I guess we kind of just set everything up and go to work and don't really have to like Google things and question what the right temperatures are and the right times. and we kind of pretty much, I think we got it down. I think we're to the point where we got it down and um, we're just, we're getting more efficient at it. So, but anyway, we'll be back tomorrow and we'll finish this up the rest of the way. So it's the next day now and all of this has dehydrated for about 22 hours. So the chicken hearts, they are nice and hard. And I think they'll make a nice crunchy treat for the dogs. I think some of the bigger feet are gonna have to go longer. I think some of these will take about two days. And then the gizzards, looks like the gizzards are completely dry. So I think some of these are ready to try out and uh, let the dogs have some. This is a chicken heart. That's a chicken heart. Oh, they're crunchy, aren't they? You like that? Mm-hmm. You want more, don't you? Good dogs. Okay, this is a gizzard. There you go. They sound a little crunchy too. It's a chicken foot. Yeah, you're gonna take that away, aren't you? They're gonna go chew on that. And yes, we did. I did cut the nails off the end of the foot, so there's no claws. 
So one thing I will say is when you dehydrate these, it doesn't smell very good. So do it out um, on your porch or out in the garage or something because um, it's, it's just not the most pleasant smell in the world. But the dogs, man, they can smell it like a mile away and they seem to like it. Well, it has been three days now. Rebecca told me we needed to wait three days and let them age in the refrigerator and that's gonna help tenderize the chicken. That's if you got the refrigerator space to do it. A lot of people will just do this right after they butcher them. They'll go ahead and shrink bag them then. But if you got the, the fridge space, I guess the refrigerator space, you can age them a little longer. So I've got the shrink bags over them. We got a little piece of tubing that goes down inside. That's gonna let the air escape. Then we just got a zip tie that we're gonna put around the bag. We're gonna try to push that down close to the chick chicken as possible. And now we can just dip it in the water. I got the water at about, I think it's around 190 degrees. That'll be enough to shrink this up. You can hear the air escaping from the tube. And you pull it back out and it looks like a chicken that you would buy at the store, exactly the same. So we just pull the straw out, tighten the zip tie up all the way. And this one is ready to be frozen. So that ended up being 21 chickens that we're gonna freeze whole, and then we have six that we're gonna cut up into pieces. We'll take these inside and cut them up. So since this is a fridge or a freezer, it's a combination or a convertible, I'm gonna go ahead and switch this to freezer. I gotta unlock it first. So it also has this quick freeze feature, so I'm gonna go ahead and hit that. Hopefully this will freeze the chicken quicker. So the reason we picked these to cut up is because they're not real perfect. This one has a broken wing and you can see it's, bru it's bruised in that area. So we're gonna not use that section. We'll save everything that we can. And we prefer chicken quarters. We'll actually put them on the smoker and smoke them. And uh, instead of cutting the, uh, you know, the leg and thigh separately, we kind of leave them together. Just like that. So what we end up with is skinless chicken breasts. We got some chicken tenders. We got some little wings and uh, our wingettes. And then you got your chicken quarters. And then everything else that's left over, we put in a bag and we'll make chicken broth out of this. All right, got a freezer full of chicken. I am so glad that's done and over with, but we still got one more batch to do and it's only 18 chickens. It was supposed to be the same size, but they shorted us chickens, so there won't be quite as many in that batch. But right here, 27 in here, um, that's basically one a week for about a half a year. And we could, if we take that chicken and we cook it whole and then shred it, and we can actually probably get two or three meals out of that. Um, or if we just cook it um, as a chicken, it works out really well too because I like white meat and Rebecca likes the dark meat and then we can usually get a couple meals out of it that way. So if we would have ended up with the total of 50 chickens like we wanted, that should have been really close to what we eat in a year of chicken. So we're a lot closer this year than we were last year. Um, and I'm glad this batch is over with. The next batch will be in like another three, I think like another three weeks. So it's coming up here pretty soon. But uh, that's going to be it for today's video. Just wanted to show kind of the before and the after, I guess, setting everything up for the butchering and just kind of what we're doing with the chicken. And hopefully this thing, I saw that it dropped to a minus 11 degrees when I put it on that quick freeze mode. So hopefully in the morning, this stuff will be getting uh, almost frozen or a lot closer. But uh, yeah, that one's pretty well filled up now. I may end up thinking about getting a fourth freezer. And that's just because I really want to have this as a refrigerator um, again for the next batch of chickens. And then I also want it to be able to store some of our vegetables and stuff in. I'd like to have a fridge, but we'll just have to wait and see. That may not be in the cards, but it is handy being able to switch this back and forth. So I think that's gonna be it for this video, guys. So thanks for watching. I hope you guys have a great day. I'll see you in the next one.